Welcome to Joy of the Eucharist. Lenten Retreat. Where we take an in-depth look at the seven deadly sins. Dun, dun, dun. And how the Eucharist is the antidote. The medicine. For their poisonous ways. To ruin your soul. Roll the sin. Okay, let me look at what I have to get done today. First, get that car washed. I can barely see out the back window since we had that snowstorm just a few days ago. Hmm, who wants to do that? I need to clean the house, especially upstairs. I've been putting that off for months now. Well, nobody really goes up there to check, so who cares? I need to respond to like 50 emails from work. Return those extra Christmas presents. Oh, and go to that bank and deposit that check. I hate going to the bank. You can't wear your hat in. You can't wear your sunglasses. So I've been putting that off for way too long. I really need to go to the grocery store at some point, too. Or we could probably just eat out again tonight. I just haven't felt like cooking lately. And when I do cook, the kids don't even eat it. Waste of time. And pray. I have been off my prayer routine lately. When was the last time I even stopped by the Adoration Chapel? So long, I just don't even remember when that was. I know my mom called and needs help getting dad dressed to go to the doctor. Hopefully I can fit that in later today. I never seem to find time for myself these days. My life is so busy. But then I was surprised when my screen time was like six hours this week. And I feel like I'm drowning. All these things to do. So let's just watch one more episode. <sighs> I don't feel like talking. I don't want to do this anymore. Let's not do it. Let's just I don't skip have it. it in me. Ooh, you want to go okay. get some lunch instead? Yes. Actually, <laughs> I haven't eaten yet today, so that's important. Oh, well, then we need to that do just that. makes sense. Right, right. We need to do this, but you know what? And then there's Let's some emails break. that I need to we respond can do it later. to and some other things that I need to do. We can, yeah, this Let's is definitely... Just... Put this Chill, off for a while. hang out. Yeah. It'll be good. Uh-huh. I'm only on season six of The Office, so I've got like two more to go. Oh. So let's talk about sloth. Uh, it's time. So every vice, right, each of these that we've talking about is a distortion of a legitimate natural inclination. So something God put in us that's good, the evil one likes to distort to make bad. The slight tilt. Mm-hmm. Sloth distorts or misdirects our desire for rest. Rest is a good thing. But, I love to rest. Mm-hmm, but, but sometimes... the inordinate rest is not great. So work is also a good thing. There's the, you know, the popular culture is like, work is evil. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't ever want to yes. work. Yes. Yeah. Work well, is you know actually you a good thing. Yeah. It's not just for the sake of money or for the sake... Work is a good in and of itself. To be a co-creator with God, like Adam and Eve were given the responsibility to guard and till the garden. To bring good into the world. To be co-creators with God. It's a primordial way of participating in God's work. But that imitation of God also requires that we rest at times too. Work isn't everything. Rest isn't everything. Balance is important. So hence the whole commandment, rest on the Sabbath day. Keep Mm -hmm. it holy. Mm -hmm. But sloth leads us away from true rest, from proper rest, making us seek it inordinately. Again, either at the wrong time or in the wrong way. There's an Oprah simplification where sloth is just laziness. I'm just going to be, just going to be lazy um, because, but that's not exactly right because rest isn't just about doing nothing, right? Proper rest is restorative, recreative, the kind of relaxation that revitalizes and reinvigorates us. That's what we should seek out. But Sloth isn't that because sloth, ultimately, St. Thomas is the definition of sloth is sadness at, at God's will for us. It's this kind of paralyzing Ooh, that's sorrow. that's good. Say that again. Sadness at God's will for us. So we're just like, I know what I need to do. I know what I should be doing right now. I get so sad when I look over my that laundry mountain. Mm-hmm. That makes me so sad. <laughs> and yeah. it is God's will for me yeah. to do that laundry. But it does make me sad and then makes me want to... Turn on a show. Yep, just or, distract ourselves, yeah. do nothing, which isn't real recreation. Another word for sloth is acedia or achadia, depending on how you pronounce it. It's just not caring. It's when we yawn in God's face and we tell him, mm, I don't really, I can't be bothered right now. I really don't care. It's that, that sadness. And especially in our spiritual lives, sloth is the most pernicious or dangerous because we know we need to pray. We know we need to, to do the right things. We know we need to go to mass on Sundays, but we're like, hmm. Yeah, maybe next week. I'll 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 do that later. So, ugh, and it's so easy to fall into. Um, 
sitting there, there's a, a one particular uh, chair in the rectory <laughs> that I really just need to like bless or exercise. Oh no! Because when I am feeling overwhelmed, I just plop down into it and stare at the wall and do nothing. Literally do nothing. Just do you scroll stare on your phone at the wall? That's another form of sloth that I definitely struggle with for sure. But there are times where I just literally just want to do. Stare? I stare at the wall. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Until no. all of the concerns and troubles of the day, I just can't think about it anymore. I just totally zone out, um, which isn't actually restorative or recreative as good rest. Because you're just sitting in your stress. Be. Yeah, exactly. And doing nothing, which <laughs> then just makes it pile up mm -hmm. like my laundry mountain. The more I sit and stare at it and say, nope, it piles up and it piles up. Yeah. Okay, but let's talk about the social media thing. Yeah. Have you noticed when you're like, oh, I just can't. This day has been so much. I'm exhausted. I'm so tired. I'm just going to hang out, chill for just a little while, five minutes. Mm -hmm. And then you lay down on the couch or on your chair, <laughs> pull out your phone, and you get on all the social meds, and yeah. you scroll, and you scroll, and then... 30 minutes has passed. You're like, where did or that time hour. go? And yeah. do you feel rested? Not at all. Not at no. all. Because you've been judging. You've been More comparing. Stressed. You've yeah. been remembering, oh, I got to do this. I got to do mm -hmm. that. And still not doing it because you're mm -hmm. still scrolling. You've been yelling at your kids. or Maybe you got a couple laughs in there. Father Novak's Sometimes go away. Sometimes there's some funny videos. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's where you could really waste a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> but at the end of it, too, you just I still agree. You just feel kind of like. What in the world did I it just takes do? It Where out did that you. time go? It sucks the yes. energy out of you. And really the tweeter, does. if you're on the tweeter, it just makes you angry because oh, of like yeah. all the angry people in the world mm -hmm. too. So people say silly things. Yeah. So there's that like couch potato sloth. But another form of sloth that I definitely struggle with is the busybody sloth. Okay, explain that like one. This cult of I'm always busy. I need to be busy. Really, that takes us away when we fill our lives with things that aren't as important. Really, a lot of times I'm running from what the most important things are. Ooh, that's deep. Um, so like think of <laughs> college-aged Father Alex in college seminary who needed to write a paper and was really stressed and procrastinating writing the paper <laughs> and did literally everything else beforehand, right? Oh, mm -hmm. okay. I can't study in a dirty room. I got to clean my room. Okay. The room's picked up and cleaned. Oh, you're now good can, that you would take it that far. Now I can write my paper. And then it's like, no, uh... I need to. I, even clean my room. I need to respond to these emails really quick because I, it's just it's cluttering my brain. And I my need to thing do in that. college would be if I'm at Panera studying, which I'm at Panera studying. Like yeah, right now I'm running into people mm -hmm. and opening myself up to distractions. Then I'm like, oh, you know what? I need a, a change, a change of environment. So then I'd go to another coffee shop, yep. and then that yep. one. I'd get a little tired of, so oh, let me go to or another place. Or I need a place. snack, or I need a drink, or no. I need a, everything has to be the perfect conditions. That's also the sin of sloth. Even if it doesn't look lazy, filling our lives with so many Nonsense. things that push out the other more important things is sloth. It's sadness at God's will. I know God desires me to write this paper, but I'm going to think of other, even good things I can think of to avoid doing what I know I really need to do. Like if I know I have do. to cook dinner, but then yeah. I started doing everything else around the house, which yeah. is good because the other stuff has to get done, but I really have to feed my family. Yeah. But I find anything else than that sloth. <laughs> yeah. And I'm so guilty of this because the priest lives are busy. Sure. Um, but unless we keep the main thing, the main thing, the most important things, the most important things, then even what we do is not worth it. There's this cult of busy where the one of the most ridiculous and absurd phrases is I'm too busy I'm to pray. I'm too busy to pray. That's insane. God, if you're too, too busy, busy to pray, you. you're too busy for anything else in your life and you need to stop. Tell them the St. Francis de Sales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. St. Francis de Sales, as I am want to say, is um, everyone should have 30 minutes every day of mental prayer, unless you're busy. Then you need an hour. Uh, right? So what? he says, when you're busy, you're prayer is even more important, more necessary, because you got all the more things to pray about and you need God's help even more than if you had a slow day, right? What a saint. So we're never too busy to pray. We have to make time to pray because we make time for what we think is important. We make time for what we think is essential, Oof. right? One of the things Straight that the frustrates me so much, and again, 
I try and have mercy, I try and have compassion, but frustrates me more than anything else is when people say, I was too busy to go to mass this Sunday. And I hear that one a lot. Like that's that's a common sin that people have. It's one of the common things that people struggle with. And that one's a mortal one. It's a mortal sin and it puts not only you, but if you're a, a parent, it puts your f- kids, souls in jeopardy. We have hours in a week, so many hours in a week. God desires only one that we dedicate essentially to him in going to Holy Mass. It's the bare minimum. And it's basically slapping God in the face and say, I know you've given me an entire lifetime, but I'm not going to give you an adoration and worship in, in actually going to mass. I'm not going to give you the bare minimum, right? This gift of my life, I'm not even going to return the first fruits one hour on Sunday or one day of rest. And really it's sloth that makes us guilty of that sin because we find anything else to do on Sunday rather than the most important thing, the most necessary thing, of being fed by the Holy Eucharist, hearing Holy Mass well, and coming in to that experience of the Lord. And what makes this one hard is that our culture has attacked this holy day for us. There is no Sabbath. Mm-hmm. They're planning all kinds of stuff, mm. tournaments and practices and this and that. Mm. And so even if you're trying... It can be hard. So if the culture is telling you, no, it's okay Mm -hmm. to go to whatever games on Sunday or practices on Sunday because you need, this is a good thing, which it is. It's good to practice. It's competition is good. It's good to have games. Recreation is good. If you go out with your family and toss the ball around in the, the, the yard on Sunday, that's a great thing. But if you're keeping people from fulfilling their Sunday obligation or keeping people from from the rest the rest that they really need cut it out yeah because maybe yeah. your family enjoys going to those things but then just can say I don't enjoy going <laughs> to those things and one of the reasons I don't enjoy going to those things is because it splits up my family yeah so that kid that's playing might be enjoying it most of the time he's complaining about having to go because they, they want to rest too yeah but I'm at that game and my husband's at home doing something else. Or if you have multiple children that have games on Sundays, then how often is your family split up? And mm-hmm. But then, yeah, then you have those families that don't like it and then they're forced to. But this one is a hard one. Mm-hmm. I know with our family, it's tough finding the not balance, but just the like justification. Would that be the word of like mm-hmm. the kids? Yes, you made this commitment. But at the same time, this is our faith, and I don't want them to get mad at God later because right. I said no to this sports thing because this is a commandment. But at the same time, it's a commandment. Uh, Father, Well, it is struggle. a hard balance to strike, too, because what does rest on Sunday mean, right? So Sunday rest doesn't mean you sit on the couch all day long, right? That's not necessarily what Sunday rest is about. It's about true recreation, things that give you life. And the thing that gives us the very most life is Holy Mass. Um, and the th- other things that give us life do vary from family to family. And do can there can be different forms of recreation for different people. And, and it, God created us unique, and that's a beautiful thing. So where one family might be like, okay, we're not going to go out to eat because it causes people to have to work or to work on Sundays. Another family might be like, well, mom's the one who always cooks, and so to give her a rest, we're going to you know get pizza or takeout or whatever. That's a it's a difficult balance to strike. And yeah, because then that decision is forcing those people to right. go out to work. But Every, then would they go out to work anyway? Uh, right. This Everyone's one is a hard conscience one. Conscience kind of has to mm-hmm. to find that balance for themselves and to listen for the promptings of the Holy Spirit. But but it is a commandment. It is. We have to keep holy the Sabbath day. The other thing that sloth can lead to. We, we talked about how the the deadly sins play into each other. Sloth is definitely one that plays into each other. Your grandmother told you over and over again, I'm sure, that idle hand, hands are the devil's workshop. I don't know if you're, maybe that's not a saying in Colombia, but... <laughs> I was going to say, might eat that. Yeah, never Speak said that. Spanish. Speak Spanish. <laughs> idle hands are the devil's workshop. Well, there's that story of King David, you remember. Um, and he was, it was the time for military... Uh, leaders to go out on campaign. And David, it says, was back in Jerusalem, lounging at his palace. So his armies were out there fighting, but David was lounging at his palace. What a dud. What a dud. And then he goes up 
at the time when women usually go out to bathe, he goes up to the top <gasps> of his roof and starts, you know, just peering around just to, you know, it's probably not that big a deal. All of a sudden finds himself uh, captured by lust, committing adultery, committing murder, and seriously falling into sin. Now, this story has a happy ending because David's repentance is so beautiful and so profound. But what got him there in the first place was that sloth, was not um, filling his time, filling with what God wanted him to do, with what his duties of life were. So too, when we let ourselves fall into sloth, don't fill our, our time with good things, because of uh, concupiscence on our sinful human nature, we far more naturally tend toward choosing bad things to fill that time rather than the good things. And problem with our culture too, like you were saying, uh, we're a pretty wealthy, pretty pretty comfortable culture. Mm-hmm. And so it's really hard for us to want to choose to do hard things. Um, it's hard for us. We resent the effort required for true holiness. We resent the effort it takes to actually get to pray, to get to mass. Um, and there's a reason that the first beatitude is blessed are the poor in spirit because that poverty, that that need actually propels us, motivates us to do the hard things. Um, the I'm bored mentality is is fought against in that poverty of spirit. I'm not bored. I am, I'm weak. I need to be engaged in the good things that the Lord desires for me. So when we are in love with someone, we diligently seek him out. We try to do good for him, find out more about him, all of that. So diligence, that's, I'm so glad you bring that up because diligence is that way we fight against sloth. It's the, the strength to do the hard thing at the right time. Right. And that's hard to do. And like you were saying, like diligence is necessary in prayer, but diligence ultimately is motivated by love. Like you just said, Mary arose and went in haste to, to visit Elizabeth because of love. She didn't wait. She was like, okay, maybe I'll go tomorrow. I don't know. The roads might not be good right now. My donkey's been, you know, backfiring a little bit. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) No, she went in haste. She diligently did the good that God had for her. And so if we need motivation to be diligent, if we need um, that, then we need to let our love grow because love is ultimately what moves us from inaction to action. It's one of the best motivations. Sure, there's duty, like the obligation. We ought to go to mass because it's the right thing to do. But if we truly fall in love, that's a much better motivator to be diligent and to seek him out than it changes everything. Obligation it everything. changes everything. Exactly. So how can we grow in that motivation to love? Well, the Eucharist. The Eucharist. Joy of the Eucharist. It, Eucharist shakes us out of our selfishness, shakes us out of our own stupor. It wakes us up. The Eucharist is Jesus' gift to us so that it can help us to make ourselves a gift to him. Jesus doesn't take days off. He doesn't. Mm -mm. He's coming after you all the time. All the time, all day, every day. Jesus is always searching after his lost sheep. And so we shouldn't take days off loving him either. There's not, there's not a day. So as priests, this is dangerous. As priests, we have a quote unquote day off, but in seminary, that's Monday for Father Novak and I and Tuesday for Father Monty. So to you know, leave them alone on us. those days. Is that what you're telling <laughs> yeah. us, Father? <laughs> but no, it's in seminary, they taught us to be very careful. Don't call it a day off because there's no day off from your vocation. Just as a parent. Yeah, there's no right? day off for me. Yeah, you can be on vacation and your kid's off far some away, far, you know, stuck at you home. You know how many vacations have been interrupted by calls? But it doesn't mean you're not a parent about anymore. This or that. Yeah, no, you just remain you never a stop parent. vocationing. Right. It's the same thing with the priest. It can be our day off, but we call it our day of repose or day of rest. Because that priesthood doesn't go away. Um, and even the small things we should do, we should do in our vocation and as as a priest. So so with God not taking a day off, I love that imagery that comes from scripture of Jesus standing at the door, knocking, knocking at your door. He knock, wants knock. you to open it Hello. up. So that's in Revelations. Mm-hmm. Revelation. Yeah, just before when, when John talks about... Um, the lukewarm, right? Yeah. That always scares me a little bit. So because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I'm about to spit you spit out of you my you mouth. Out of my mouth. Terrifying, right? And So don't be lukewarm. It's easy to be lukewarm. It's so much so comfortable. You can just sort of like sit there and not have to but try. But you were not made for comfort. You were made for greatness. Hmm. Pope Benedict 16th. Mm-hmm. Something like that was the quote. It's a really mm-hmm. good one. Yeah. 
So don't be lazy. Don't open be up lazy. that door. Yeah. Go open up your Bibles today and read Revelation 3, 15 through 22. And go to that imaginative Ignatian prayer thing that we've done before from the Advent retreat. And place yourself there with Jesus outside of your heart, outside of your door, knocking. And open it. Don't open be too lazy. Open that door. Get up. Go pray. Go to Mass. Thomas says, let me find joy in the labor that is for you and let all repose that is without you be tiresome to me. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Loving God, thank you for the dignity of work. Thank you for the beauty of rest. May we keep in good balance the work that we do and the rest that only comes from you. Train us to seek after you with our whole hearts, and not find cheap substitutes which leave us drained and empty, Help us always to be diligent and quick to respond to your love. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Mary, Mother of the Eucharist. Pray for us. us.